Okay, so good morning once again to all of you. Welcome to um, another day of class. I hope all of you all are doing well and uh, keeping good, um, enjoying your lessons and classes as well as the work God has given each one of you uh, to do. Um, we have uh, we have been going through elements of a good marriage uh, in the last uh, couple of weeks, and uh, so we you know we we went through very many details of uh, a good marriage. What are some of the good elements? What are the elements of a good marriage? So we we looked into communication, we looked into conflict resolution, teamwork. Um, uh, building boundaries, uh, sexuality, um, the the home management, uh, many things we we looked into, and today we're going to come to the last part of the um, of that uh, of the element of of uh, 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 elements of a good marriage, which is which is spiritual growth and nourishment. Um, and I'll uh, just for you to turn to page. Um, 180. <clears throat> We're going to be looking at uh, two chapters today on pages 180 to 190. So in this, we're going to be covering uh, the family altar and intercession, as well as um, uh, the local church and God's kingdom, the family and its relation to the local church and God's kingdom. So we're going to be looking at uh, these two specific areas as we um, focus on one of the most important elements of a good Christian marriage, a good Christian home and family. Okay, um, so yeah, you could you could uh, work alongside with me on page one eighty. Just follow along as we are going to be uh, looking at some some of this. Um, so I, I, I um, you know, we all understand that there is a huge significance in the way that a family comes together before God. Uh, and there are very many ways or ve very many, um, uh, uh, yeah, very many ways of how a family can build itself or a family grooms itself in its spiritual growth. And one of the uh, most important ways that we see is through family prayer. And uh, and I think all of us or most of us who've grown in Christian homes and Christian families um, have seen this as a part of our growing up. Maybe at the time that, uh, uh, you know, we were children, and we had uh, we had to be a part of it. We didn't understand as much the significance of it. But as we have grown older, as we've grown uh, with the Lord, under knowing that uh, the family coming together in uh, one together in either prayer or in fellowship or in worship um, or reading the word together definitely brings down the glory of God. Uh, so my, uh, and you know the glory of God is seen when when uh, people honor this time of fellowship and family um, prayer. And the more the glory of God uh, is there in our homes, the less habitable it is for the powers of darkness, right? The more that families come together in prayer, in worship, the less space and place or opportunity the enemy has in working there. It, it becomes less habitable because people are uh, anointed and working in the power of the Lord. So we're going to be looking at, um, at some of these uh, uh, elements and see how, how is it that we can uh, establish this as one of the biggest truths in in knowing uh, in establishing a good marriage so as uh, members in a family so especially as parents we are called to be able to nurture um, uh, the the spiritual aspect <clears throat> of of the children or of the different members of this family and what does this involve it does involve um, learning the word of god uh, not just formally but also informally 
you know, maybe t uh, in every situation of life, uh, talking about the word of God, bringing back the word of God into maybe so, as principles for the way that we conduct ourselves, the way we make decisions. So the word of God is, uh, is, is a big part uh, in the way that we nurture uh, the family or the children, nurturing them nurturing children in the work of the Holy Spirit, knowing that he is God and he is with us and in us and he helps us in every walk of life. Uh, also helping our children understand what is the importance of a local church and also the importance of how to um, uh, work together in the kingdom of God. So this kind of of a nurturance is something that needs to be done intentionally. It doesn't come automatically. It is something that requires uh, intention. It should be, there should be specific disciplines or specific times or ways that a family needs to get, uh, needs to ensure that this happens. Okay, uh, the only way that we can ensure uh, having that relationship and fellowship with God is some of these means where we make uh, spirituality a part of our lives and not just reserved for a Sunday morning or reserved for the children's church or a pastor to do or, or a life group to do, but it's something that needs to be weaved in to the um, uh, in the family, uh, you know, li like like just how how you eat a breakfast, lunch, and dinner, there is also uh, spiritual growth that happens uh, at at most parts of our days and our lives. Now, this uh, this specific chapter, we're going to be just looking at uh, two areas of of the fam of family prayer time or family altar, or as it is called, and how do we intercede for members of the family. Okay, um, so there are simple, uh, uh, you know, when, when we're looking at what is family altar, we, we understand that it is a time where all members of the family gather together to worship, to pray, to read God's word, to meditate, um, uh, to, to pray in the spirit, um, to um, sing songs, to, to learn a lot more with God being in the center of, of that point uh, of time. So family altars is something that needs to be, like we said, intentional. So it needs to be a discipline. So to be able to choose it at a part of the day, some part of the day where it's where it where everyone is present or it is convenient for everyone. So may, ensuring that this is something that is done regularly and often and keeping this the time of the family altar meaningful and relevant um, you know especially at homes where there are younger children there may be uh, it, it is necessary to make it uh, uh, understandable and meaningful for them as well so having a time uh, depending on the age of the family members especially the children making it a lot more um, uh, I'm on page 180, Christopher, page 180. Yeah, so making it more meaningful uh, through through different ways. So we could, uh, you know, uh, so some, some things I remember that we do as well, we did when the kids were younger is, uh, um, you know, we would have something like a role play and uh, we would pose as people who didn't know God, and um, we would we would ask our children to defend, uh, you know, their faith, and uh, you know, and and the role play was generally, you know, we we're kids and we are kind of, um, uh, you know, asking them questions, and so in that way, you know, they're able to think and they're able to understand. So we, we you know, you can do it in different ways. Um, there could be days where you're just reading scripture, or days that you're just worshiping together, or just praying, you know, or just learning, doing a study together, or doing doing any kind of maybe, you know, um, watching a documentary uh, on, on, on the power of God or, uh, you know, there are so, so many things that you can do to build 
uh, the family up together in, in a time of family altar. So um, uh, one thing that maybe we need to also remind ourselves is that uh, uh, keeping uh, the time meaningful in a place where there can be discussions, where questions can be answered. So you are encouraging um, thoughts and opinions that may not be um, uh, that that may sound very opposing to you, but keeping that time open where you are actually discussing some of this. Also taking it a time to really pray for needs of the family, whatever they may be. Um, and that, that again brings about a lot of connectedness for different members of the family. You know, when everyone seems to be pursuing God for something that one member of the family is facing, brings about a sense of unity, a sense of togetherness and agreement in power. And we see that when, when you know, scripture says in Matthew, when one or two, when two or three are gathered in his midst, there he is there, he is there in their midst, right? So there's power, his presence is there, his anointing is there, his blessing is there when people gather together. So also when it is done within the family, that power, that um, the presence of God is, is uh, operational during that time. So in a case where there is either a spouse or the children who uh, may not have a personal relationship with Jesus, it is good to invite them on and may keep um, invite them to keep to bring it at a time of prayer. That's not where, you know, we may bombard them about how sinful they may be or or any of it, but just engaging them in that time to keeping it as simple and as welcoming as possible. Okay, one of the the other thing that's important um, when when we're looking at um, at building uh, spiritual growth is uh, standing in the gap is to be in a place where you are interceding for one another. Okay, uh, and uh, maybe I I'm on page one eighty, and would somebody like to read the scripture that is there on Luke twenty two thirty one and thirty two. Luke 22, 31 and 32. Somebody could just unmute and um, read out that scripture. Luke 22, 31, 32. Yeah. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Thank you, Christopher. Yeah, so we see, you know, uh, just like in this scripture, Jesus is talking and he's telling Simon how he has interceded for his faith, right? One of the important things uh, we as family and especially those of us who may be parents can do is to stand in the gap and pray for um, uh, our family members or on behalf of them. When now, So what is it? Why, why is this um, effective? Why is this needed? Uh, we know and, uh, you know, all of us um, recognize that that God has a specific purpose for each one of our families to fulfill. And uh, as parents or on behalf of our children or even your spouse, you stand in the gap and pray that God fulfills that specific purpose that he has for the lives of our children or lives of our, um, uh, of, of our spouses. We can even pray for you know difficult circumstances that our family members may be going through it may be a challenge at work it may be a challenge in school it may be something to do with certain relationships that they may be having um, or they may be in certain uh, situations or circumstances that may not be optimum they may be crises and we stand in the gap for them so that god would would give them the wisdom and the strength they need to deal with whatever they are going through. So you standing in the gap, standing there and interceding on behalf of your family. You can, we also can pray about their faith, that they will grow in their faith, that they will 
uh, maybe at a point of time, you know, maybe let's say when uh, I, I'm, I'm sure we all have done this at some points of time, but just to highlight the power that it has when we intercede, uh, there may be times of probably sickness or uh, uh, terrible um, defeats that the faith of somebody may be weaker or uh, at a point of a of a crisis you know the um, members of the family being led astray or have have chosen not to believe anymore we pray we pray on behalf of them for salvation we pray that their eyes would be enlightened they will be they would be able to uh, have a revelation of the knowledge of God in their life. So uh, these are places where we continue to intercede. We also stand um, in the gap of, you know, on, on behalf of them because we know that the enemy is one who wants to kill, steal, and destroy. And he's uh, looking around, prowling around, looking for one to devour. Right, so we pray that the enemy schemes or his ways or his attacks um, against our family members are hindered. You know, they are they are broken, and if there's anything that discourages them, that they would would stand up using the armor of God. So we continue to pray for different things, and you know, as we get along into the chapter, there are um, you know, this chapter is a very very beautiful one because it um, you know this is something that you can practically use at your prayer time when you're actually praying for your family. And as we go through, you will see uh, how you can pray scripture. You know, scripture is um, the word of God. It it is life right and the more that we speak life we know that god's word whatever um, is meant for it to accomplish it will be accomplished it will not come back void so when you pray praying for your spouse or praying for your children or praying for specific members of your family use the word of god because um, you know that your intercession uh, has taken effect as you pray scripture as you as you speak the very word of God um, into the lives of um, your family members. So in the next section, we're just going to, you know, kind of have an overview of what are some of the things that we can pray for. We may not be able to look at every scripture here, but uh, I, I will um, suggest and, you know, take time uh, to go back and um, pray this and don't see this as a lesson. Maybe, you know, I think it's better that you see it as a, a time where you can really apply uh, these, uh, what we what we are talking about today and using this to pray, to intercede for your spouse or for your children or for those you are absolutely burdened about in your family. Okay, so there are different sections of um, uh, intercessions that we're going to be looking at. One is interceding for your spouse. The next is interceding for your children. And uh, uh, the third is interceding for salvation. Um, and four is interceding for the home um, uh, at large where, where you're, where you're declaring the promises of God uh, to, to your home. So we will look at some scriptures that are there are very many scriptures that's there through this um, uh, this chapter uh, and you know we'll just probably skim through a few of them but take time to maybe today tomorrow take time uh, half an hour just praying these scriptures uh, over over your family members okay. So when we when you pray for your spouse, here are some things that you can intercede um, for your spouse. Now, th this entire uh, this part of it is uh, refers uh, for a for a husband to a wife, but of course you can you know you can always the same can be applied from a wife to a husband as well. Okay, so the first thing that we look for, which is most important in the life of a Christian, is um, praying for their spiritual growth. And according to scripture, and there are uh, three specific scriptures that have been highlighted here Ephesians 1 15 to 21, um, Ephesians 3 14 to 21, and Colossians 1 9 to 11. So, you know, as you're praying, uh, you know, maybe maybe it's, I'm I'm just going to probably do like a model prayer, um, you know, and that's the best way to to 
to even do it and and uh, uh, you know have all of us probably follow that so just opening up scripture and uh, and you know praying and um, so just taking a few verses from Ephesians 1 15 onwards uh, you pray that that uh, you know God would give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation to have a knowledge of him okay that they might grow in the knowledge of God and then you can pray that the eyes of their understanding or their hearts will be flooded with light so that they can understand and see the hope that they have been called for and uh, that, that they will know the working of the mighty power of God. They will understand the uh, greatness of the power within them for those who believe in him. So you're, you're actually calling um, and praying for a spirit of wisdom and salvation um, for, that they will they will grow in the knowledge of God that their eyes of understanding would be opened and they will see what is the calling or what is the hope that they have been called for and then that they will know the power of God, the working of the mighty power of God in their lives, the greatness of his power. So when you're actually speaking this, you know, you're calling forth for a spiritual revival in their lives. Okay, going on to Ephesians 3, 14 to 21. Uh, you, you, you know, you pray that they will be strengthened with power in their inner man by the spirit, that their inner, that their inner man will be strengthened through the Holy Spirit, that Christ would dwell in their hearts through faith, that they that God would be more and more in their hearts as they trust in him, that they will begin to see the depth of God's love. They will comprehend the depth of God's love that is there for them, that they would experience the love of Christ, um, even though they may not completely comprehend it, that they may be filled with the fullness of God. They will be filled with the fullness uh, that, that God gives um, in their lives and the power that comes from God. And so what you're doing is, you know, you're declaring that by the mighty power of God that is at work in them, they will be able to accomplish a lot more than what they could even ask or imagine. So this is, I'm I'm just looking at scripture and, and just reading this out um, to you and, you know, praying this out. So perfectly okay to, you know, open scripture and, and confess it. And, uh, and this can be done for yourself as well as well as for the different members of your family looking at Colossians 1 9 to 11 um, here also you pray that your family member may be filled with the knowledge of the will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that um, they will be filled with the knowledge of God's will in every kind of wisdom and spiritual understanding that they will walk worthy of the Lord fully pleasing him and they would be fruitful in every good work and increase in the knowledge of God and be strengthened by his might uh, according to his glorious power so when you speak this when you intercede on behalf you are actually speaking the very word of God into the lives of of your loved ones into the lives of your spouse then this can be done both you know for anyone even when if, if you look a little down even the prayer praying for your children you use the same scripture as you declare these things over them okay what else do you pray for yes you've prayed for for your spouse's spiritual growth you pray for the purpose that God has uh, that God has for their lives, whatever uh, purpose God has called them to, you know, praying for growth in the purposes uh, or that God has invested in their life, that they will grow in whatever gifting that God has put on them, whatever talents that that God has placed in them, any kind of a, a calling that they may have, um, you know, that they may walk in it and they may fulfill everything that God has ordained for their life. Maybe, especially when you're praying for your children, this probably is something that they may not, it's not fully, um, um, uh, opened up or it it isn't fully revealed but then as you pray in faith you pray uh, in faith over every purpose that God has for their life that you will call forth um, 
uh, uh, that they will walk in the gifting and the calling and the anointing of the Lord and they will fulfill everything that God has purposed in their lives. When you're doing that, you're actually, um, you know, uh, you're, you're coming against the natural and, and you are declaring the supernatural over your family. Okay. Um, the third one is declaring in different ways. Now, this is specifically for a woman, uh, you know, um, uh, I mean, specifically a husband praying for a woman. Uh, women, you know, you can find uh, equal scriptures to do that for, for your husbands as well. So declaring what God word says maybe if you know if you're a husband praying for your wife declaring that your wife will be a woman who builds up her home a wife who who will who will be a prudent woman who brings in pride and joy to the home these are all again scriptures that she will be a fruitful wine in the home bringing a lot of blessing and protection to the family that she will be a virtuous woman, she will be blessed in all that she does, um, and, and that uh, her family will rise up and call her blessed. She will speak wisdom, and she will bring out gentleness. Uh, she, will, she will bring about honor and respect to the other members of her family. So this is uh, just declaring again all uh, of God's goodness over the life uh, of, of, of your wife. The next thing is to be to be uh, to declare wisdom, success, and blessing over the work that they may be doing, the ministry that they may be doing. That God would fill them with every wisdom in conducting themselves and the decisions they make, or in the people that they serve. That everything that she does would prosper. Everything she does would be blessed. Um, you know, there are many, many scriptures, you know, praying that she'd be the head and not the tail, uh, that that uh, she would be on top and not the bottom, that God's wisdom would be in and through every work that she does, that the knowledge of God would flow in through the wisdom that she uses in her workplace or her ministry. You can go about praying now, de depending also on the kind of need that your spouse may have. Maybe it is a health issue, you know, declaring God's healing over them. Uh, maybe it's um, an issue that they have with, um, uh, you know, maybe certain relationships within their own home, uh, you know, declaring, declaring God's peace over that, or it may be, um, um, you know, certain mental health issues, maybe someone who's going through depression or who's going through a mental health condition, speaking uh, the uh, speaking uh, sound mind over them, the spirit of a sound mind. God has given us a uh, uh, love, power and a sound mind and declaring that over them, that, that there wouldn't be fear that traps them or any kind of thoughts that are not in obedience to God, taking captive every thought that is disobedient to God and making it obedient to God, 2 Corinthians 10, 5. So uh, whatever the situation is, you know, finding scripture for it and praying out loud for uh, your spouse. Similarly, you know, even as you take time to praying for your children, there may be additional things apart from what we've uh, we've, we've looked into the sections below. Um, uh, I, I, you know, praying that God would call forth their destiny, would bring them to their destiny, uh, would reveal to them where they should go. They will, you will call forth their uh, prophetic destiny and calling based on what God has put into them. Uh, also, you know, children. Um, uh, with with the places that they are in, however young, however older, to to on behalf of them san sanctifying and blessing every gift and skill God has put into their lives, and that they they would use each of them for the power and the glory of God, and uh, thereby fulfill the purposes of God's kingdom. Also declaring um, that no other. Um, uh, uh, you know, that there wouldn't be, I mean, something that I keep praying for my children is that there wouldn't be time wastages in their life. There wouldn't be things that keep them away from the true calling of God, you know, because of all the kind of, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, entertainment and stimulus that they have around. It is so easy to be distracted and to and to have your attention diverted um, away from what 
it is that God's calling you to do. So, um, you know, so depending on whatever your children are going through, and it could be different for each one of us, um, but knowing that your intercession, you know, is precious, your intercession is something that God desires of us. Uh, go on, continue blessing whatever they have in their present, um, you know, their, their characters, their health, their academics, their sport, their um, collecting or learning of wisdom, the choices that they make, the relationships that they have, the decisions that they may uh, take on, um, the lifestyle that they may lead, um, that that uh, um, they will not be swayed and swerved by the um, by the um, uh, you know, by, by the influence of, of the world outside, that they will be focused minded, they will, they will be, they will look forth to God, even in honor, even in um, uh, their presence, so that they could be honorable in whatever they present back to God. Okay. Also taking the faith and blessing them, their future, praying for their future. And there is absolutely nothing wrong in praying for, uh, you know, the career options for of your children, um, the people who they will marry, uh, the, the, the opportunities that may, that, that they may come through the choices that they may need to make um, their uh, their success and how, what kind of an impact that they will make uh, later um, their families the relationships that they may have the ministry that they may do the workplace that they may get into um, and, and the way that they serve God and and go on with missions I mean these are the the list can be endless I mean there are so many things that you can pray for. And of course, praying and binding and destroying any uh, attack of the enemy, any weapon of the enemy against their lives, you know, calling it null and void and, and coming uh, to declare that they are protected protected and and uh, you know as your descendants they will be blessed and they will be fruitful in every work um uh, and knowing uh, knowing how to resist the devil and how to resist his his attacks so uh, again these are different ways that you can you can uh, you know pray over for your children like i said uh, you know you do not limit it to the items that are here on this book but then continue to adding on more depending on what your children need so i remember this uh, and i and i think i i just want to take this as an example uh, which i was just telling my son uh, two days ago um so when he was around three and four he was a very timid child uh, you know wouldn't talk to many people would be quiet um even when he goes to school uh, just did not know how to defend himself if he was pushed or hurt or all of that he would just maybe sit in a corner and uh, just um, uh, you know be extremely shy and timid and that used to s worry me um, and so something that I used to do I used to drop him to his Montessori and every time I took him on my bike I would pray this aloud with him I would say his name is Jeremy I'd say Jeremy God has not given you um, uh, uh, a spirit of fear but he's given you a spirit of power of love and a sound mind you have no fear because you trust in a God so this is what I would say day in day out as we used to go and just you know as I was talking to him today now he's 16 and uh, he's um, uh, right now he's you know he can he will talk he, he's not a chatty person but he can um, uh, he can make conversation you know he loves people he loves to talk he loves to connect uh, he he doesn't like sitting at home he says you know I, I need people around and that's not somebody I I thought I would uh, groom um, but I believe that was the power of God's word that changed that for him now, even as I'm saying this, my next testimony is uh, over my daughter. There are other things that I'm concerned about, which I'm still praying. I haven't seen the uh, the manifestation of it yet, but then I believe if a God has been faithful in answering prayer for one, He is not a God of favor. He's He's not a God of favoritism. He definitely will hear. So, but then I still keep declaring over my daughter things that are very specific to her. So I, I just want to encourage all of you, you know, maybe you have children, um, maybe you're praying for a spouse or, or a sibling, whatever it is, don't give up. 
keep praying because you are praying the word of God over their lives. Are you all with me? Because there's absolute silence. There's a thumbs up would be good. Great. Thank you, Abni. <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, one of the things that we need to actively also do is praying for the salvation of our family members. There can be a possibility that either our spouse or our children are not saved and they have not come with a, into a personal relationship with God. Um, we It is important for us to be able to um, not nag and give them uh, the the time and the space they may need to make a, a personal decision in their lives. Um, you know, I keep telling my children that you're not going to go he to heaven because of me or, or your father, but you're going to go to heaven because of your personal commitment to God, right? And you've got to work on and you've got to make yourself right with God. You don't have a passport uh, because of me, right? So, but yet, um, having said that, there is, there may be, there are times that you know we need to give them their space especially as they're getting older where they will learn um, for themselves um, what god means for them but what you can do instead of nagging threatening pushing pulling what you can do is simply um, be there show them god's love and pray get onto your knees and pray the work that you're doing on your knees is what is necessary. Um, yes, you may see, um, and, and I'm sure a lot of us have had that experience in our own lives, that our lives went from a very difficult place to an absolutely adverse crisis. Because, um, uh, you know, sometimes we lose out, we just forget God and um, become totally, uh, you know, the opposite. But I think some of the things, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of us can um, uh, witness to this, that there were people praying. It could be, you know, your parents, or it could have been your grandparents, uh, but there were people praying. And I believe for a fact that, um, you know, if, if, you, if you generally look at the trajectory of your own life, you know, how it has been, if it wasn't for the hand of God and the people who prayed for you, you would know how it would have slumped. But because of people who've, who've stood up and believed in prayer and believed in the power of God, <coughs> we have seen a difference in our own lives, right? So pray, praying for their salvation. And what is it that we can pray for? First and foremost, as in 2 Corinthians 4, 4 and 6, it says, you know, to bind and cast down every spirit of the world, whatever it may be. It could be um, a, a deception, you know, things that they believe um, which are against uh, uh, the, the power of God, the existence of God, uh, against the nature of God, against fall re false religion, anything that binds them, anything that holds them, declare that God's uh, light would shine into their hearts and they would uh, and the and the knowledge of god will be revealed upon them through jesus christ so speaking the scripture over their lives as you bind down every spirit uh, casting down any kind of a stronghold or any reasoning like i said 2 corinthians 10:5 any any thought that is in opposition to god's word casting them down bringing those thoughts captive so that they would be open to to know the, the truth of God's word in their life, you know, praying that the Holy Spirit would convict them of, of sin. That's what that's the work of the Holy Spirit, that he convicts and he um, uh, brings about righteousness and judgment into the hearts of people. So inviting the Holy Spirit to convict the person of their own sin so that they could turn away from unrighteousness, um, asking God to bring them closer to, to him, that they would seek him, they would abide in him, that, th that their hearts would desire 
for who he is. Now praying also that God would move them to a place of repentance, to a place of godly repentance, and um, that, that the truth uh, would, would help them to keep away from the evil one. The, the truth of God, the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ would keep them away from pursuing evil. Also asking God to give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that their eyes are enlightened what we did pray initially you know the same ephesians 1 15 to 21 that they would know his word they would know their calling they would know how great the power of god so you you take uh, uh, you know you can take hold of god's word in any area what wherever it may be so whatever the needs um, of your family members are okay uh, in the next uh, page that is page um 183 and 184 uh, you have scripture you know that uh, that we can use and and i just thought you know it would be nice um uh, rather than us reading the scripture maybe we have 10 minutes we can take time uh, there are there are specific two sections there okay i'm, I'm on, like i said i'm on page 183 and 184 the first section is praying promises to pray and declare over your home and there are scriptures of psalm 118 15 uh, psalm 128 1 to 6 there are a couple of proverbs and there's isaiah okay um, maybe let's take five minutes to pray for our homes using the scripture <clears throat> And the rest of the five minutes, we pray as we, uh, um, you know, declare scripture over our children. Okay. Um, would anybody like to participate and do that? It's perfectly okay. Even you're, you're going to be reading. That's that's perfectly okay. And it's all right to have your eyes opened when you're praying. Uh, God sees that you're praying scripture. Okay. So, would anyone like to like to take on the, um, you know, pray for your home and maybe declaring god's word over your home and all of our homes anyone would like to do that come on this is not an assessment okay no one's going to mark you Okay, ma'am, I'll pray. Shavni, go ahead. We thank you, Father God Almighty, for this beautiful day. We thank you for your awesome presence in our life. We thank you for the amazing promises that we have in the word, Father. We thank you for the fellowship and agreement that we have in the name of Jesus, Father. When we come together and we uplift our families, our children, our spouses in prayer, Father. We uplift them to your throne of grace this morning, Father. Trusting, Lord, Father, knowing, believing that your word has the power to break every stronghold. Every stronghold is broken by the power of your Holy Spirit and power of your word, Father. And as we declare this word, Father, give us that faith, that unwavering faith, that when we speak your word, Father, the, the demons tremble, the strongholds break down, and that your work begins lord father in an in our in our lives and we know father that you have promised the work that you have begun you shall bring it to completion and today we declare that the voice of rejoicing and salvation shall be in the tents of the righteous father and we are being made righteous by your blood father we do not lack anything father by your stripes we are healed by your work on the cross we have been made righteous and by the blood of jesus our sins are forgiven and our and our, and our uh, sickness is healed, Father. And today we declare that, yes, Lord, in our dwellings, in our households, in our homes, there will be rejoicing and salvation in our tents. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly, it says, Father. It is your right hand that has kept us safe and sound till day, Father. Last one year, two years have been very, very intimidating, Father. We could have been somewhere else, Father, but it was your grace, your mighty hand that had saved us, Father. And thank you, Lord, Father, for the name of Jesus that you gave us. Through that name, we are saved. 
And Lord, thank you for, for all the other blessings that you shared on us, Father. Lord, today we pray that as your word says, happy are those who obey the Lord, who live by his commands, that our families, our children, our spouses, and ourselves, Father, that we would be submitted to walk in uh, your word, to live by your commands, and to delight to fear in the Lord, Father. For your fear gives us that wisdom that we need to live an obedient, a victorious, a meaningful, a truthful life on this earth, Father. Lord, let your commands be the sweet portion of our life. And day after day, as we meditate on your word, as we meditate on your truth, let your word completely take root in us, Father, and lead us by your Holy Spirit, Father. All our other needs will be met in Jesus, Father, for your word says that you will provide for our needs and you will be uh, and, and that we will be happy and prosperous, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful promise. All by your grace, these things accomplish in our life, Father. We do not have the ability to do anything, but as we lean on your grace, as we look up to you, Father, we believe that uh, you will uh, make the uh, women in the house to be fruitful wine and the children to be like young olive trees around your table, around our table, Father. Thank you, Lord, Father, for you are the giver of all good and perfect gifts and you do not add sorrow to those gifts, Father. You bless us with all heavenly blessings and you bless us with, with all that we ask in the name of Jesus. We thank you for answering our prayers. Also, Lord, Father, uh, you, you bless us in all the days of our life, Father, every family Every family who is uh, here, Lord Father, today and Father, looking up to heavens for, for their needs. We may not know what the burden of their hearts are, but we know, Father, that you know it all, Father, and that you will release those burdens right now in the name of Jesus, Father. Touch every heart, touch every anxious heart, touch every fearful heart, touch every weak heart and also an unbelieving heart, Father. We may be here and yet we may not be believing in your promises, but today as we read your word, Father, we know that if you say that the house of the righteous will stand, it will stand, Father. No one can come against it, for you are the protector of that house. And if you are with us, who can be against us, Father? Thank you, Lord, for these promises that we read that the tents of the upright will flourish and the house of the righteous there is much treasure we thank you lord for this such beautiful reassuring promises that we stand upon today and lord father we speak peace and joy and righteousness in our homes father divine protection over our children and spouses we speak your divine provision in their lives for all that they need they might be going through challenges as they are away father they may be facing situations that they may not be able to tell their parents or or they may not be able to share with their family members but let lord let their hearts grow so close to you that they may be able to share all their concerns with you and see the answers coming and in everything father they may see your mighty hand moving father even when things are not going good father they may still love you even when things do not move the way we want to father we may still trust you that you are with us and you're leading us and there is nothing that is too difficult for us or uh, for you father or nothing that is too impossible for you father lord thank you that you've given us this platform where we are being taught such beautiful intricate truths of life father that delivers from all evil father and help us to walk in that glorious victorious future present and lord father uh, life which is uh, designed by you uh, and lord father thank you that you have given us uh, the lord's prayer father which says let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven thank you lord father that your uh, will in heaven is beautiful and as we accomplish uh, lord father and to learn your truth and to be rooted in it, Father, your will be done in our lives as well, in our households. We cover everyone in the precious blood of Jesus, trusting your grace in this time to cover everyone, touch every heart, release every burden, break every stronghold, and continue to be with our teachers who are diligently teaching us these beautiful truths, Father, so that we be set free and walk in that freedom and uh, fullness of your love. Thank you for everything. Thank you for every person here and blessing each household. We commit all things into your mighty hands. In the name of Jesus, our precious Savior, we ask and pray. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you, Abni. Amen. Thank you. All right. Would someone like to pray for children? Take on the verses that's there. And um, you could take up a couple of verses. You don't have to take all. 
but just a few verses. Um, would you like to pray and declare for children? Anybody else, someone else would be nice. Anybody? Thank you, Lord. Mom, I'll do. Sure, Anita. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, Lord. Father God, thank you for your precious soul, our Father Lord Jesus, all of our sacrifice, all our Father Lord Jesus, which has availed so much, much for your children, O Lord Father. For you are a good, good Father, O Lord Father. Almighty, O Lord Father, Lord Jesus, help us to stand on your promises, O Lord Father, Lord Jesus. Father God, thank you for our children, O Lord Father, Lord Jesus, a godly offspring, O Lord Father, Lord Jesus. Almighty, O Lord Father, we take time, O Lord Father, right now to bless, O Lord Father, all the offspring, O Lord Father, Lord Jesus, your gift, O Lord Father. Almighty, O Lord Father, Lord Jesus, we declare Psalms 37. Father Lord, I am old now. I have lived a long time, but I have never seen good people abandoned by the Lord or their children begging for food. At all times, they give freely and lend to others, and their children are a blessing. Thank you, Father. Father, Psalms 112, 112, 1 to 3. Praise the Lord. Happy is the person who honors the Lord who takes pleasure in obeying his commands. The good man's children will be powerful in the land. His descendants will be blessed. His family will be wealthy and rich, and he will be prosperous forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that our ways are not worldly ways, O Lord Father, Lord Jesus. We are not, O Lord Father, Lord Jesus, a part of worldly ways, O Lord Father, but we are, O Lord Father, living here. Our children, O Lord Father, have a great, O Lord Father, Lord Jesus, life over this earth because of your grace, O Lord Father. Thank you, Lord Father. Father God, Jesus, we, O Lord Father, according to your word, Psalms 127, O Lord, one, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain, who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is when for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Thank you, Lord Father, this gift of parenthood, O Lord Father. Such a blessing, O Lord Father, to see our children, O Lord Father, growing in front of us, O Lord Father, Lord, flourishing in your grace and mercy, O Lord Father, Lord. Father, Lord, thank you for the verse, Isaiah 8, 18. Here I am, I and the children whom the Lord has given me. We are, of, we are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. Isaiah 44, 3 and 4. For I will pour, pour water on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. They will spring up among the grass like willows by the water courses. Thank you, Lord Father, Lord Jesus, for our children, O Lord Father, in these end days, would, O Lord Father, would have a godly influence, O Lord Father, Lord Jesus. They would hunger and thirst for you more than anything else, O Lord Father. They would be, O Lord Father, your, O Lord Father, Lord Jesus, glorifying your name in this world, O Lord Father, Lord Jesus, set, set up, being set apart for your glory, Father God. Isaiah 49:25. But thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible be delivered. For I will contend with him who contends with you, and I will save your children. Isaiah 54:13. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. Thank you, Father, for this word, O Lord, Father, Lord Jesus. For O Lord, Father, any parent, O Lord, Father, can teach O Lord, Father outwardly, O Lord, Father. But O Lord, Father, inward change of heart and character, O Lord, Father, can be brought by you alone, O Lord, Father. Thank you for the assurance in this word, O Lord, Father. Father, we surrender our children in your hand, O Lord, Father. Thank you for Isaiah 59, 21. As for me, says the Lord, 
this is my covenant with them my spirit who is upon you and my words which i have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth nor from mouth of your descendants nor from the mouth of your descendants descendants says the lord from this time and forevermore thank you lord father thank you for your precious word oh lord father who is life unto us oh lord father light unto us oh lord thank you father lord jesus that oh lord father lord jesus you never leave us never forsake us oh lord father our children are safe and sound oh lord father in your hand oh lord father and great oh lord father lord jesus is blessing oh lord father for them that they are taught by the lord himself oh lord father thank you father lord jesus we commit them into your hand once again and give you glory for their lives oh lord father in the mighty and matchless name of jesus i pray amen 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 thank you anita thank you abni for for praying on behalf of each one of our children remember that when we've spoken god's word over them it's not going to go void but it will come back and accomplish what it was sent for okay great thank you so much so we will uh, connect back in 10 minutes it's 10:55 on my clock we will be back by 11:5 see you see you back soon